Glitches as we know them today are often game breaking. They impede your progress, they make a visual mess on screen, and they're overall not very fun. November alone has seen the most broken buggy messes of 2014. But what if I told you that one game had so many exploits, changing the entire way the game was played, from a fast-paced, rage-inducing first-person shooter to a slow, all-inclusive, cooperative glitch fest? This is Halo 2, and how glitches bring people together. Let's get to work. Welcome to Halo 2, the action-packed sequel to system-selling launch title Halo Combat Evolved. I've got to admit, I've been a big Nintendo fan my entire life, but I think every teenager goes through a phase where all they want to do is blow stuff up and look sweet doing it. Not a very desirable characteristic, but I'm guilty of it. This lust for violence is what first brought me to Halo 2, but something else would keep me playing for a very long time. Halo 2 released on November 9th, 2004 to critical acclaim. Everything was right, the music, the graphics, the gameplay, and even the campaign mode despite ending on a cliffhanger that most reviewers did not enjoy. I think there's something I'm forgetting though. Hmm. Oh that's right, this game single-handedly set the standard for online multiplayer on consoles through Xbox Live. Critics praised Halo 2's online capabilities as a result of its unique online matchmaking system, something that several publications referred to as a turning point in the gaming industry during the early 2000s. Halo 2's reception was going great, however, things began to change pretty quickly. Over time, the game began to grow rampant with cheaters exploiting bugs to raise their online rank through methods such as standbying where players would reset their routers intentionally, leaving all of the other players staring at a blue standby screen, their characters standing motionless so the cheater could rack up the kills. Or even bridging where one player would gain the infamous host status, where said player would gain the advantage by hosting the server, experiencing zero lag. If you played Gears of War back in the day, you know what I'm talking about. And that's only naming a couple of the numerous exploits in the game. Looking back on it now, boy was it infuriating. It promoted a toxic community, much like what people experience today with all the insults and the trash talking in the current Call of Duty. And I can remember rage quitting matchmaking to do something else. Something that changed the way people played Halo 2 forever. Oh, Super bouncing is a glitch that allowed players to reach, well, seemingly unreachable places. This glitch occurs when a player is pushed into the ground and forced out, shooting them hundreds of feet in the air. The first step to doing this is something called a crouching glitch. This is the easiest part of the super bouncing process. Trust me, it only gets harder from here. All you have to do is find any corner that you can crouch in that forces you to stay crouched when you let go of the crouch button. According to my research, this causes some sort of desynchronization between the player and the game. After doing this, your next goal is to find a point where a super bounce is possible. These points are called polygon seams, where the developers connected two parts of the level. Once you finish crouching, you have to jump directly onto one of these spots from a relatively large height. This will cause your character to pass slightly through the bottom of the map, and to correct this, the game applies a huge amount of force in the opposite direction, shooting you way up into the sky. If you pass through the level entirely and you're killed by the Guardians, you're doing it right. Keep it up and soon you'll be soaring. It's a bit tricky to pull off, but damn when you get it, it's one of the most satisfying moments in a video game ever. This had a bit more of an impact than you might have thought. After its discovery, super bouncing became the next big thing. It became a culture. Before you knew it, everyone and their mother was learning the super bounce. There were clans made exclusively for super bouncers. The only way in was to perform X amount of super bounces in a given time. Clans in an online multiplayer shooter. For super bouncing. They didn't even shoot the damn gun! This changed the entire way people played Halo 2. The sheer popularity of the super bounce meant that everyone wanted to do it. And just like that, the teachings began to spread via voice chat through the entirety of Xbox Live. Much like folklore surviving generations of people solely through word of mouth. Pretty crazy, huh? And it didn't stop there. This opened the floodgates for tons of glitches that may not have been as widely known if not for the movement that was super bouncing. Sword cancelling, rocket boosting, button combos, breaking the campaign levels, and butterflying just to name a few. See this invisible wall here? There is an invisible wall right here. We're gonna break it. Well, if I jump onto this rock... No. How to do it? Oh, what's good, homeboy? And look at that corner with my rocket launcher. 
It breaks. A I swear. I swear. <laughs> you stop that. Well, would you look at that? Oh, what's good, homie? Yeah! Now I can walk up the stairway to heaven. Or even turn black. All inclusive. Butterflying in particular was one of my favorites, and probably the most versatile glitch in the game. You see, with super bounces, you had to find just the right spot, and if you didn't get it right, you could be at it for hours with no results. On the other hand, if you tried butterflying instead, you would, well, fly. Alright, here it goes. Oh, we flying. <laughs> oh, we flying. 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 Oh, flyin'. Alright, alright, we're good, we're good. Oh! With this glitch, players could defy all boundaries of a level, by having one player jump on the head of another while the bottom player mashed the X, A, and B buttons simultaneously, the pair would fly to the heavens. If you could pull this off, you could reach any corner of the map. But with all these glitches, you gotta ask yourself, did Bungie intend for this to happen? I mean, for Christ's sakes, anyone could figure out that you could fly the Banshee out of the map on headlong! Well, this is interesting. This will never work. This will never work. This will never work. This will never work. <laughs> this will never work. He's outside Yay! the map. He's outside the map. So could they have? Of course not! But if they did, they'd be mad geniuses. At face value, this game looks like a broken mess. But if you were there, if you experienced the discovery yourself, this is one game you would never forget. The exploration was everything. See that tower? Bounce up to it. See that crushing pillar? Jump up there. See that poorly textured space needle? Fly to it! And you know what the best part is? You couldn't do it yourself. At the time, there weren't wikis and video guides showing you where to crouch, where to jump, and where to land to get that perfect bounce. YouTube didn't even exist yet. If you wanted to learn how to get on top of the crane on headlong, you had to make friends. In a strange way, Almost every glitch required you to have a buddy. You had to cooperate to achieve your goal. This isn't really the case in these modern FPS games. Sure, you have teams, you have team-based objectives, but more often than not, you're at each other's throats for stealing kills. It doesn't paint a good picture when the majority of your players proceed to mute everyone in the lobby as soon as they join. And yeah, you wouldn't be wrong to say Halo has its fair share of squeaking 11-year-olds that want to touch your mom for whatever reason I'll never understand. But beyond that, there was a community of dedicated fans willing to share experiences with you that you probably thought were impossible within the confines of the game. It's human nature to want to find out how things work, even by breaking it to pieces. In plain terms, Halo 2 accomplishes what was impossible without even trying. I can remember playing online with my friends from school for hours every weekend. The fun never ended. Everything great about Halo 2 was still there, after a while the cheating problems with matchmaking began to fix themselves, and the campaign was always great, but there wasn't the excitement and satisfaction of pulling off the next obscure glitch. The previous generation grew up with the NES and the Super NES, but this is what my generation grew up with, and I'll be damned if someone tried to take that away from me. But you know what? You can experience this yourself in the Master Chief Collection. All the glitches we've come to know and love from Halo 2 are present in this remastered version, maybe because they realize just how popular these glitches are. Even today I'm finding glitches in Halo 2 that I never knew were possible, and every time I find something new, it makes me wonder, what else could be in store for us in this new game? All I know for sure is I never thought I'd be saying that I want an Xbox One. It probably goes against everything you're taught about game design, but when you're tearing to shreds your Sonic Booms and your Assassin's Creed Unities, try to remember that some glitches are pretty damn fun. And that, my friends, is how glitches bring people together. <laughs>